When dispensing beer from a keg you need CO2, but can you replace a CO2 tank and regulator with soda bottles. It turns out these bottles can hold massive amounts of pressure before failing. So I'm taking two bottles, hacking together my own regulator and seeing how much liquid I can serve. This episode is sponsored by Kegland. More on them in a bit. So why would I want to replace this with the soda bottles? Well, this CO2 tank is great, but it's not very portable. If I'm bringing beer with me in a keg, mini keg or something like that, we much better to have a smaller CO2 tank. This regulator is huge as well. So let's build something that works in these soda bottles. Now, soda bottles like these, I wondered how much pressure they hold. And I found something online that told me that your typical Coke bottle or soda bottle is going to hold somewhere between 2.7 and 4.7 bar of pressure. That's actually pretty high. At 4.7 bar, that's 68 PSI. So just kind of your average Coke bottle here, when it's warm in the store, uh, could be as high as like 60 something PSI. And the warmer the liquid inside, the higher the pressure is gonna be when it's carbonated beverages. So that's kind of the first interesting thing that these things can hold up to storing a good amount of pressure. And Key at Kegland says that some of these bigger bottles here, they can hold up to eight bar. That's what he's tested, which is around 116 PSI. Now we're gonna start small with this guy. And I think the first thing to say is like, why use a soda bottle as opposed to say, this guy, just a, a regular water bottle. And the difference is of course, in what these things are designed to hold. Now an average water bottle will hold maybe a tiny bit of pressure, but it's holding a still beverage. There's no CO2 in solution here, whereas this actually is designed for that. So you know, just from feeling it, this is clearly a good deal thicker than this, but it goes a bit beyond that to the, the base. So you can see that the Coke bottle here has this kind of bumpy base, whereas the water bottle, it's not an entirely flat base, but it pretty much is fairly flat. So what this bumpy base is, is it's called a, a petaloid shape. And what it does is it helps to distribute the internal pressure that's exerted by the Coke or whatever carbonated liquid you have in here. And by adding these bumps, it adds a structural integrity or a structural rigidity to the bottom of the bottle. The curved surface of these bumps provides a bit of resistance and that helps to prevent the bottom from flexing outwards. Whereas with a more flat bottom here, all of that liquid would just kind of push the whole thing out and this would kind of bow out here. Now I wanna try this out. I wanna put some CO2 into here and then pump out some liquid from a keg and see how much liquid I can get out from just and see how much liquid I can get out from just one of these little bottles. But it's recommended to do a test as to check on the integrity of this bottle before you do that, uh, using something called hydro testing. Now, hydro testing, that's short for hydrostatic testing, and it checks the integrity of the bottle. Uh, basically, it means fill it with water almost all the way to the top, then just apply a little bit of pressure. Now, why fill it with water? Well, when a container's kind of pressurized with a compressible gas like CO2, which is what I'm about to add, if, uh, if the bottle were to fail, the gas is gonna expand rapidly and uh, that could cause the container to burst quite explosively. So if I fill it with water, uh, water is more or less an incompressible fluid. So when it's pressurized, if it fails, the fluid isn't gonna expand rapidly. Now, how do I get pressure into this thing? Well, I have a little tool for that, a carbonation cap. So let's take off the regular lid. Kind of crazy to think that this little lid here is holding down something like 60 PSI of pressure potentially. Uh, and now let's put this carbonation cap on and uh, bring out the CO2. It's getting serious, so uh, goggles at the ready. So I'm going to connect this up to the CO2. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of pressure. Yeah, it feels pretty solid. About as solid as I think an unopened bottle would normally feel. So that seemed to, to pass the test. 
but it's recommended with hydro testing that you test at about 50% higher pressure than you're going to intend to actually use. So if I'm intending to use this at two bar, I should test it at three bar. All right, three bar, no explosions, seems to work. So I'm just gonna take this and uh, vent the pressure. I mean, it's only this tiny amount here. There we go. Kind of sounded like when you open the bottle. All right, so I passed the hydro test. Now let's get rid of the water and try this for real. So back on with the carb cap, just finger tight. Kind of wish I had a little bit more protection in case this goes wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna stand off camera a little bit. Uh, let's do this. Okay, you know, I just realized that I had my regular set to three bar, not two bar. So, uh, so much for my hydro testing of going over a little bit. So how much liquid out of a keg can this bottle of CO2 at three bar dispense? It is a 20 fluid ounce or about 600 milliliter bottle. I have this mini keg here. This is the oxy bar keg it holds four liters of liquid and hard to see there, but it will hold pressure up to four bar or 58 PSI. What this consists of is if I open this up, so we just have a liquid line here and a filter on the end. That just runs in here. And then out the other side, we have these three connections. So we've got the gas in, the liquid out and then a pressure relief valve as well. Now I need some kind of regulator because there's three bar of pressure here. That's way more than I need for serving pressure. And that is this guy here. So this is a spunding valve. And what I can do is I can set the amount of pressure that comes in here by turning this dial. And then that will regulate how much pressure comes out the other end. Uh, and this will go into my keg. So I've got my CO2 tank connected into my keg. Coming out of my keg, I have my beer gun. Let's take this flask and see how much of the liquid this is going to displace with the CO2. What do you think? Do you think we're gonna get like one liter? We're coming through at a pretty good rate. I've set my dispensing pressure to about 10 PSI on here, and I can see now that the pressure is starting to drop. So we're already kind of running out of pressure. So a little bit less than 1.5 liters, a pretty good amount has been displaced. All of this has been displaced with just the amount of gas that could fit in here at three bar. And I certainly could have put this at a higher pressure, but I think we need to go a bit bigger. So we're going to try this two liter bottle of soda at much higher pressures and see how much liquid I can dispense from that. But before we get to that, a quick word about today's sponsor, Kegland. All the equipment you are seeing today has come from Kegland and this whole process was something that Key from Kegland told me about. They really are the ultimate destination for all your brewing and dispensing requirements. For example, the PET kegs that I'm using, those are the reusable Oxybar kegs, which are perfect for sharing beer with friends. I'm a big fan of the versatile duotite system for the liquid and the gas hookups, which you've seen me use. And I serve my beers through my NukaTap draft beer taps. Kegland also have a killer YouTube channel hosted by Key, who also demonstrated this exact process that I'm trying here, and you can learn about all of their latest products as well. Check out all Kegland have to offer at kegland.com.au. Okay, so the big boy. Now Key recommended that I dispense at five bar of pressure so I'm going to hydro test this at 1.5 times that, so 7.5 bar of pressure. Safety is number one priority. And while I know this will be a much better video if this now explodes, really hoping it doesn't. Mm. 
Well, I got to four and something's leaking, but it's my regulator. The pressure relief valve is uh, relieving itself once I get to 60 PSI of pressure. Well, that's interesting. It looks like my PRV mm. is designed to not go beyond four bar. I thought it would go higher than that. Actually, I was expecting it to go at least seven. Uh, so, well, four bar is gonna be where we're stuck at. Uh, this passed the four bar test. I would have liked to go on a bit higher. Fair enough, we will get rid of this water and then try filling this whole thing with four bar of pressure. Well, something interesting, this feels a bit warmer than it did before. Pretty rock hard. I'm not sure I would really want to go to nearly double this. Let's see how much liquor we get out. I've kicked the keg. There you go, four liters of water. So it worked. Now, Key tells me that one of these two liter bottles pressurized to five bar can dispense up to 12 liters of liquid. So you can get quite a lot out of this. And I think this is gonna be very useful for serving out of some of these Oxybar kegs and some of the other smaller kegs I have when I'm out on the go, because it's just pretty easy. I just have this and then that little kind of spunding valve regulator set up and I'm good to go. Now, have you tried anything like this yourself? Putting pressure in a CO2 bottle for on the go? Um, I would love to hear from you if you have in the comments. Let me know like what pressure are you using? How much liquid can you dispense? And uh, has anybody had an explosion yet? I'd love to hear about that as well. If you wanna see some more kind of ingenious ways to use some of this to brew in a thrifty way, you might be interested in some of our cheap skate brewing tactics and uh, Alex can tell you all about those in this video here.